May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Welcome to Cram and Kirk. To begin our service, we stand as the Bible enters the sanctuary. If you're able, I invite you to stand with me. A very warm welcome to Cram and Kirk for those who are in church for today's service. A warm welcome to all those watching from home. The service today is marking love and loss, and so that will be reflected in our hymns, in our readings, in our prayers, and obviously in the address. Announcements are printed in advance for those who are here. I invite you to read them, drawing attention to two or three for those at home. Grapevine will be available for delivery from next Sunday. It goes to everyone in our parish area. Bible study coming up on the 9th of November is looking at one of the Psalms. We're going to be running a course, Suresh Sanders, Diane Williams and myself, and I'm going to ask Suresh to come forward and say a word about that now. Um, she's just going to come forward. The Church in Israel, we're supporting Sophie Chapman, one of our young members, and we ask you to hold Sophie in your prayers. She's leaving for Israel on the 5th of November. And finally, the Christmas fair on Saturday, the 3rd of December, we're going to have a Christmas fair, getting back to normal after COVID. We do need help, car park, catering, cleanup team. Please sign up. All details are given. Suresh. <laughs> Thank you. Though nothing can bring back the hour of splendor in the grass, the glory of the flower. We shall not weep, rather find solace in that which is left behind. Entirely wrong. We should weep. If any of you had read Revelations, you will see the abject horror of what's happening to the people in those pages. We are almost in collusion with each other about grief and loss. I will say to you, are you all right? And you'll say, fine. And I'm fine too. But it is a thing that unifies all of us. There's not a person in this church today who has not experienced grief and loss. Loss of a parent, a child, a stillbirth, loss of a sibling, it may be that your partner is still with you, but not mentally with you because of dementia or mental health issues. It may be you've lost your job or position, but we have all experienced this grief. And to some extent, we deprive ourselves of moving forward by not discussing it. It is the aim of this church and supported by Reverend Gilmore, we are running this course um, it's starting on the 16th of November for three weeks for an hour from 7.15 to 8.15. So we're trying to capture people who are working as well. And we will possibly do this on an annual basis so that we can help each other. Because that's the only way to make things better, not to pretend that it's not happening. And when we've done this before, we've used music and poetry and readings and just shared experiences of grief and loss. We cannot make it go away, but it is made easier to bear by expressing it. I make a special plea, gentlemen, to you, 
because um, in the medical journals, it's very well documented that men do very badly in these situations, deny that they're experiencing any problems at all, and often have very adverse outcomes. Thank you. Thank you to Suresh. One last announcement is that a set of car keys have been found in the car park, therefore a Honda car, and if it's your car, please speak to me at the end of the service and we'll return those to you. Virtually everything comes up on the screen and I'm going to ask Leslie Hoyle to lead us in our call to worship. If you have an order of service, the words are also printed there. So let us worship God together. Come among us, God, you who cast the planets into space and cradle a sparrow in her nest. Come, God, and meet us here. Come among us, God, you who bless the poor and the broken and stand by the sad and the strong. Come, God, and meet us here. Come among us, God, you who dance in the silence and shine in the darkness. Come, God, and meet us here. We sing together a version of the 23rd Psalm, the King of Love, my shepherd is. It's him 462. <laughs> Let us approach God with confidence. Let us pray together. Please be seated. <laughs> Lord God, the wonders of your creation, seen in the splendor of the heavens and the color of autumn, the beauty of the earth, the order and richness of nature, they all speak to us of your glory. Heavenly Father, be with us in every experience of life. When we neglect you, remind us of your presence. When we are frightened, give us courage. When we are tempted, give us power to resist. 
when we are anxious and worried, give us peace. When we are weary in service, give us energy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Boys and girls, I have a couple of things to show you today, and I think you're going to need the adult's help for this, because I have asked David to come in, and in the last week or two, somebody has given me a big, big note, money, and I'm willing to give it to any of the children here. The amount in the note is not 1,000 or 5,000. It's not a hundred thousand or a million. It is, in fact, we'll ask the adults if they know what number that is. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven zeros. How much money is that? It's not easy, is it? I used to work in a bank and we used to have to write cheques for the black and white whiskey bond and they'd be over a million pounds and you were very, very careful that you got the correct number of nothings or you get into serious difficulty. According to me, according to me, this is 500 billion and this is the note. I'm going to show it to the children so they see I'm not making it up. Do you see that number? Look at that number. 500 billion. And I'm willing to give it to you. I'm willing to give it to you, but you have to make a choice. And the choice is this choice. Would you rather have enough money to get you right through your life to be able to do all the things you want to do? Or the choice is having good health for all of your days. That's the choice. Quite easy, isn't it, really? All the money you want or good health. So, we're going to ask the adults to help us. We're going to ask them to vote as well. And we see <laughs> there used to be a TV program and they either said, take the money or open the box. But the, <laughs> this is going to be take the money or have good health. So, if you would like to vote for the money. There's also a car in this package because I've got a set of keys. So money and a car. Vote for the money and the car. Hands up. Who would like the money? Oh. The money is yours. Okay. And if you would like health, please put your hands up. Who would like health? Look at that. A forest of hands. Two hands. Some people putting up. Two hands. Absolutely fantastic, because in church we believe that God makes the world and makes all its people, and one of God's great gifts is the gift of health. And we're constantly asked to look at things in a new way, and we've got a quirky little song we're going to sing now, which reminds us of that point. It's called, In the Bulb There Is a Flower, 727. I'm going to take this out of the way. <laughs>
be seated. There will be Sunday clubs and there's also a creche available at the back for the smaller children and Louise is there. So it's at the end of this aisle and on my right. And if people want to go out to the Sunday groups, this is the chance to do so. Let us hear the word of God. The first reading is taken from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, and reading from verse 1. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the, get- from the west I will gather you. Amen. The second reading is taken from the New Testament, St. Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, and reading from verse 13. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, 
about those who have died so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. May God bless to us the reading and hearing of his holy word, and to his name be all glory and praise. Amen. In our hymn book, there's a tremendous variety of hymns which are appropriate to this occasion. And I thought to create some variety, we would sing the next hymn, Seated, though we'd ask a soloist, and I've asked Emma to sing the first verse. So she's going to stand and sing the first verse of hymn 730, From the Falter of Breath, and then we will all remain seated and join in verses 2 to 4. The words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, a rock and a redeemer. Amen. On Tuesday coming, a group of us will plant an oak tree marking the life of Queen Elizabeth II. It will happen in Cramon Primary School at 2 p.m. and people are allowed to gather there if you want to be part of that. It's part of a project which Stuart Richardson, one of our elders, has been leading, and it's offering people the chance to mark those who lost loved ones, particularly during COVID, but for any reason, by planting trees. The Queen's recent death opens up the subject of marking life and love and loss for us. In Cramond, we are fortunate that we have a book of remembrance, and if we choose to have our loved one's name written on that, people can bring their prayers for the person over a you know, hundred years. It's a lovely thing. We mark it in Cramond by having a graveyard, which is not a place of death, but actually a place of life with beautiful trees, 
beautiful flowers, well cared for by our own members. It's a place where people come to sit quietly and remember and give thanks. On Tuesday at Cramond Primary, we're going to take eight trees, including the Queen's, and 100 bulbs. In the past, marking a loss was much easier than it is today. You may well remember that people would buy mourning clothes and wear them for at least six months. Men would wear black ties for a similar period. Curtains would be closed for a week. In the Jewish tradition, the pattern is that if you've lost a loved one, you would go to the synagogue each day for lunchtime worship for up to a year. There were patterns and rituals which allowed not only the family or the individual, but the whole community to mark loss in appropriate and generous and helpful ways. I became aware that the Queen's death, like Princess Diana, had released something in her nation, something that was missing. I was astonished when my two teenage grandchildren, 17 and 16 year olds, said that they wanted to go to St Giles. They were willing to stand in the queue for hours. They went in to see the Queen's coffin at three o'clock in the morning. They are not particularly religious. They're not somebody who would promote the monarchy, but they wanted to mark somebody who had been there for their whole lives, somebody who was respected, somebody who was loved by most people in our entire country. The biblical witness, Old and New Testament, covers 3,000 years of people trying to be honest about who made the world, about the gift of life and having thanksgiving for harvests, being honest about death and beyond death, what happens next. The strongest biblical image for death and for the life beyond is water. That may surprise you. The Jewish community did not like the sea. There's very little written about the sea in the whole of the Old Testament except that God created it because the sea was unpredictable, dangerous, frightening. So one of their images of heaven, which comes from the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation, it was a relief to the Jews to hear, there will be no more sea. And it's not just the Jews who thought that crossing over from life to death would, in, would mean crossing water. If you've ever been to see the great pyramids at Giza, you will know that beside the biggest pyramid, the, a solar boat was created, placed there 26 centuries BC. A huge boat, it's now called the Solar Boat Museum. You can go and see it reconstructed. I'm sure you can see it on Google as well. And this was for the, the Pharaoh and his group after death to create the book, uh, to create the boat and to cross over the sea into the life beyond. The Jewish people did not say that God was going to whip us over to the other side and all would be easy. Let me remind you what Leslie read. Do not be afraid, I will save you. I have called you by your name, you are mine. When you pass through deep waters, I will be with you. I will be with you. Do not be afraid, I am with you. The creator of all promises to be with us in every circumstance of life, and even beyond this earthly life. The Christian faith followed on from the Jewish faith, affirming all of those things, but adding one thing more. Jesus, as the Son of God, was able to control the waves. He promised to be with his disciples. He faced death, returned back from it, 
to meet with his disciples by the Sea of Galilee and show them where they could fish again, numerous harvest of fish. You know the Christian symbol of the cross is empty. Christ has gone beyond death. I want to share, to close, our second reading afresh. This is Paul's words to the early church at Thessalonica. Our friends, we want you to know the truth about those who have died so that you will not be sad as those who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again and so we believe that Jesus will take back to God those who have died believing in him. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue our service by singing again. And this is another powerful hymn to a very familiar tune. It's hymn 729. We will all stand to sing. Hear me, dear Lord, in this my time of sorrow. be seated. And Cram and Kirk, at this point in the service, we bring our offerings, our gifts of time and talent and money. And so, as we bring the offering forward, we stand and sing the doxology, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow.
so now we're going to remember those in this community who died over the last 24 months. And so I'm going to ask Richard and I'm going to ask Leslie to read the names for us, please. Robert Russell. Morris Fowler. Anne Gumley. Mary Cruel. Frank Whitehall. Margaret Taylor. Elizabeth McLeave. Min Hunter. Willie Prest. Cameron Thaw. Marshall McKinnon. Alec Bissett. Jeff Barber. Irene Laidlaw. Dan Hall. Andrew Mather. Nevin Kerr. Irene Sanders. David Hall. Phyllis McNiven. Muriel Lee. Angela Glancy. Audrey Duff. Margaret Semple. Alice Burnett. Marie Leach. George Cruikshank. Anne Brown. Joan Walker. Jack McKellar. Jimmy Rogers. Pat Bertram. Margaret Hay. Sheila Mackay. Sandra Rowentree. Ada Smith. Daphne Green. Bill Maguire. Innes Hardy. Dorothy Tweedale and Pat Gray. Now we're going to bring our prayers of thanksgiving and our prayers for others. Let us pray. In glad thanksgiving for your goodness, we offer our gifts and pray for the commitment to offer and present our very selves to you, a living sacrifice, fit and ready to serve this community, the church and your world. God of all creation, who cannot be contained by our boundaries or our definitions, you are present in every distinct place in every moment of history, you are here. You are here and now. Help us to understand that those from whom we are separated in death, by its long silence, its aching absence, are each of them in your presence. That beyond our horizons, beyond our boundaries, beyond our understanding, they are in your embrace. Come with us, God. Come into the painful and lonely places of our memories and of our lives. Come. Come with your angels and bring us peace. Guide us through whatever waters we face. Grasping the strong arm of our brother Jesus, who has travelled this way before, and who taught his disciples everywhere when they pray to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
I want to thank all those who have made an effort to come along to today's service and all those who have taken part. There will be teas and coffees in our hall and for those who are part of the Marking Love and Loss in the Millennium Room, they will be baking, but please feel free to travel between the rooms and to chat to your friends. I'll be down to join you just shortly. We're going to finish with a very positive hymn for all the saints who from their labours rest we're going to sing verses 1, 2, 4, 7 and 8. They'll come up in the correct order on the screen. It's heaven, hymn 740. Hallelujah, death has lost its sting. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon us, all those we love, from this day and forevermore. Please be seated. Please join us in the halls. <laughs> 